Hi everyone, David Maley here, and today I'm going to show you some really interesting uh, graphs that you can do in Excel really quick and easy. I usually do these at the end of a uh, analysis. I've already gotten the data, and today we're going to show you how to do uh, benchmarking or target lines, gold target lines. So again, I do this at the end of an analysis once I've got the data. So if you look to the left here, these are well first at the right. These are the graphs you're going to end up with. Okay, and what's neat about them is that I can go and filter it down to a group and both graphs will reflect that. See that immediately. So they're interactive graphs based on a slicer. Now I can clean out the uh, filter here. Now let's go over to the left. So what I have here is I have weekly pawn shop sales, right? And what I want you to do is I want you to look at the yellow columns, okay? I do have other things like I've got right week. Maybe we should make that one yellow too. Um, Right week is 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way through 20. So what that column means is that's the week, business financial week, okay? And 1 through 20. And then we've got it grouped. So we got group of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There, there is no 6. It could have been 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. In this data set, it groups 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And obviously, the closer they are to 0, the larger the sales are for that group. Maybe those are the older, more long-standing uh, pawn stores. So this is their sales. As they you'll see from group zero, they tend to go down to the lowest is group five. And then you have their average next to it, quarters, you know, is it first quarter, second quarter, period, and average uh, temperature. If we wanted to do that, I don't know why that's in there, but that's, you know, we could use that for forecasting. But the main ones I want to show you here is here's this goal column, right? And they've actually hard coded in their goals with a if a nested if statement. So we can go up here and look at that. And here's their goals. You know, if it if it's a uh, E2, which is the group. So if group is five, the group their goal is 259. If it's uh, uh, four, it's 598. If it's three, it's 1175. If it's two, it's 2065. And if it's a 1, it's 3250, and then they've got a comma, and then 7550. What that means is that if it's a 0, if it's none of these, then it gets 7550 is the goal. Now, what I want you to do is look at this. So you got the, you need to have, so if, even if you're looking at a different data set, you want to do the same thing. You want to have a time period. So we have right week we're going to use. It could be dates. We could have, you know, daily dates. We could have weekly dates. Like we have here, we could have months, we could have anything, but you want to have time series data. And so what I've done is I've created a pivot chart. So you know how to create a pivot chart. You're going to go and hit insert pivot table. I mean pivot table, not pivot chart. Pivot charts are these. This is a pivot table. So you hit the pivot table. You bring it in here. And then what I want to do is I want to show you what I've done. So this shows your pivot table fields. And from the data you can see I have right week, I have sum of sales, and I have goal. So as we see right here, I have them in here. You can right click here and see the uh, actual values that I have in there. We have sum. We have for this one, we have, let's see here, same thing, sum. So it's very simple. And what I've done is I have under rows, I have right week. And then under values, I have sales and goal. So what that does is it gives me, instead of having you know uh, six entries for each week, I've got one entry. And it's basically grouping it by that. So what we have is each week I have a total of sales for all six groups, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? And what it does, it gives me the total for each week, and then it's going to take the goal for each week, which is going to be the same because, see, the goal is carried on down by that nested if. So we've got our, it'll add these all together, and the difference is the sales will vary, but the goal will not, unless you could have a goal that changes, you know, every month, and that's fine. Then you would have your goal change. But what we're trying to do here is have an exact straight line. So once I have this here, then I can click in here, and I can go up here to insert, insert a pivot chart. Now what I want to show you, let's get rid of this. I want to show you how to bring these in. So what we're going to do is you would right click on your data once you have it set up like this. And if you have any zeros and stuff, you want to remove them. Uh, the easiest way is to go hit analyze, change your data source, and make sure you've selected the exact set of your data. If you go below your data, you know, and you select everything, which you can easily do by just clicking on the tops, what you'll do is you'll have a zero row 
that every time you clear your filter on these charts will come back and you don't want to have that so you use the exact uh, columns and uh, rows of your data so I would start here and go up and then if it's a large amount of data I would just do a couple of these and then set it to one when I do that um, inside there so if I take this and again I look at uh, what I'm gonna do here is these uh, pivot charts you would right click here and you would click uh, instead of this group you're gonna hit insert and pivot chart right so you get your pivot chart and what I want to do is I want to have so I can do the same thing from this I can hit change pivot chart type and what you want to do is you want to have a combo chart for the first one okay so this first one is going to be a combo chart and I'm not going to pick a line or a uh, bar and the reason being is I want to have a combination of them I want to have the sales be in a bar chart or a clustered column as it's called here and I want to have the uh, goals in a straight line so in this case we have a line for goals so we pick combo clustered column for the uh, uh, sales and then line for the uh, goal right so then we hit OK that brings us this you know then you can go and make it nice and get rid of uh, any of the extra pieces on here you can put your uh, chart title in there it's very simple you just click here and add in your chart title you know any other things you want you can change your colors in here if you want change your formatting a little bit if you want by hitting the paint button regardless what I want to show you here now is so I've done this I've got it for sales and goal based on this data here and what I want to do is I want to create a slicer on that but before I do the slicer I want to show you one more graph down below and then I'm going to build a slicer so it operates on both so if you look at the graph down below let's hit change chart type now this one I've done a line because they're both lines and so what you do is you select line hit OK and what it's going to do is because I am using the same I'm building it off the same thing so you right click in here hit insert pivot chart and then line it'll bring in the same data same thing as up here sales and goal over the same time period which is the weeks right down below and so what I have then is I have goal is a straight line same as here but now the sales instead of being this uh, clustered column or bar chart it is now a line so I can see it with both it's better represented here I can see, you know it, it just to me I want to see both maybe I want to see the clustered columns and this together next I would hit and I would click on one of these and I click on insert right here and then I click on slicer and it brings this up and I select the data I want and obviously in this case it's going to be group because I I don't want to pick sales or goal for this sales would be too many and goal would just be one option I have one goal you know 15 1 6 7 so I don't want to do that I want to actually have something meaningful that's why I showed you back here we have group is important so and it could be sales reps if you're looking at data with uh, 10 15 sales reps in it you would pick your sales reps as this you want to differentiate based on that if you had multiple car dealerships you might want to select by that in this case we have group which is different uh, uh, pawn shop stores and we have and you can see by looking at it obviously here's zero here's one zero almost looks like the other thing because zero is most of our data remember he has more sales than the rest and we could pick one we could pick two three four five and it'll update and show you the different ones on them okay so we can sit there and look at okay if I pick group five only and I'm not looking at group zero one two three or four this is what I look like you can also hold the control button down and select several of them if you wanted to there we got through groups three four and five together if I just wanted to look at those two which would be our lowest performers in this and you can see when we do that it changes back to the pivot table it changes the pivot table goals and it changes the uh, both charts based on that so I can clean it just by or clear the uh, filters just by clicking here but it's a cool way to look at our data and see our data for any kind of time series data so you have in this graph and in this data we have pawn shop store sales data and we have it by week so we have it for a period of 20 weeks and we can see our sales sometimes they go down sometimes they go up but you can see it and you can see in this 
are you at goal? So your goal for this period, year, whatever, is that each week we hit 15, 1, 6, 7. So that's our goal for all of them. Now, each group has its own goal, as we saw back here. But all together, that's the altogether goal for all six of these stores, 0 through 5 in the, in the group. And you can see here that a couple times we've broken the goal, which is great. And there's a bunch of opportunities here, areas where we're a little bit weak on them. Maybe they need to do some more advertising, some more campaigns, uh, some more programs to get customers in, uh, mailers, things like that. That's how it works in the business world. So we want to identify the low areas and bring them up. That's what the you really want to do. And uh, that's where this is really helpful. So if you're in sales, you're in marketing, this is an easy way to end your data once you have, you know, to analyze it and show it to your customers, so your requesters. So here we have our data set. Again, I showed you right week group, some sales and goal. And uh, then we just go and quickly make a pivot table based on that, two pivot charts, and we add a slicer on it. And we have our sales with a uh, benchmark or a goal target line, and we could easily change that. In this case, the way they've done it, is with a nested if so easily you would go in here and just change these values uh, you could change you know this to 300 if they're reaching that too easily or you could bring it down let's say a 7550 is too high we would just change that one here and make it 6800 or whatever the new goal is okay and that way you can just trend and see you know are they at goal and you could have it monthly you could break it down uh, a lot of car sales dealerships want to see their data monthly how are they trending monthly? So you could have week and month. You could have this broken out by week and by month. If we had that data in here, I don't, but I could add it in. I could make a column of month. And, uh, you know, I, actually, do we have that in here? I'm not sure. Uh, we have right week, group, quarters, period, and no, we don't have month. But you could add that in, especially if you had dates. If you had daily dates of sales or something like that, you could bring in your month and uh, you could see month. Uh, week, you could see the dates and months, you could see year, whatever you want, year over year, you can do all kinds of cool things and see how you're training with your goals and see if you're ready for a new goal, a new goal to drive the sales a little bit higher. Sales uh, managers and executives love this kind of stuff. So it's a great way to just dress up your data at the end and show it to your uh, your customers, your requesters and show them, hey, here's some, here's what I've shown you with this data and here's some areas of opportunity you can work on immediately. Very, uh, week 15 and 16, uh, or 17 and uh, 20 and 19 and especially 3 and 1. They're all below goal, so we need to do something to pump those up, especially when it's in an area like this where they're all below goal for that little bit, or maybe this whole area right here. So between weeks 14 and 20, maybe they want to do a marketing campaign before that. So thanks again for watching. I hope that you found this helpful and interesting. If you're in business analysis, data analysis, reporting and analytics, data science, anything like that, and you want to dress up your data at the end, this is an easy way to do it. Make some sales with some uh, or uh, goals, whatever it is you're doing. It, you could be doing operations. You could be doing shipping numbers, whatever it is. And uh, in this case, weekly pawn shop sales. But you're doing benchmarking here with goal target lines, and it's really helpful to your requesters. Thanks again for watching. Please subscribe and like, and have a great day.